Take it out of the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Now, coming up... Let's do this. This week, we take the grand tour on a journey through history. Mm, we... Hurry up! And I was using this Volkswagen Amarok as an... It's out of the way. <laughs> Right, here are the rules. I have to do this using the lowest revs possible. So what I'm going to do is put it in four-wheel drive, low range, something Jeremy Clarkson can't do, first gear manual, and turn the traction control off. Here we go. Traction control, diff lock, down you come. Three, two, one, go! No! That was just that was oh, just, right just, on your <laughs> dunk. What a feeling. Oh, I bet that did that. That oh, was just. Yeah. That is in the face. Yes. By the whole earth. Yes. In the face. Do you see what happened to your nose? Yes. Look at it. Yes. And now it's your turn because. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, matesy tongue. Right. It's time for your reign of terror to end. Three, two, one. We're off. <laughs> All right. He's dragging you. He's taking you for a scrape. Get a bloody move on. And now it's time for me to win as I get rid of the last of the country's hated dictators. Dick Pot. Slack. There might be a really bad jolt, so be careful. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I've won another test. I've won both of them. How have you worked that out? Well, 600 RPM, OK? And I did the best in the village. You destroyed the village. Listen, let's not get bogged down with that. We must now move on to what typically happens in a country after the dictator is gone. <laughs> Whichever one is the fastest from here to the flags there. <laughs> and the lightest of the trio. Probably not now, but it was. Three, two, one, go. The standard low cost procedure right out of the way. <laughs> The first thing you need to know is that the only bits that these two cars have in common are the roof and the front doors. Everything else is changed. Suspension? Oh, yes, that was changed as well. It now has Bilstein dampers that cost a thousand pounds each. And rose joints and ceramic wheel bearings. Like you get on a race car. Oh, 
Okay. that, the eight-speed gearbox also needed beefing up. And so did the four-wheel drive system. And then they had to get rid of the spare... Get a bloody move <laughs> So, here's the question. How... Here we go! Long Islands and Bolletti. If you go beyond the limit... There we go. That's it. Keep going, keep going. stay within the limits and in this car that's no hardship not talking about hurricanes anymore I do think we should find out how fast it goes round the Ebola drone good start
much time left. on the road because it's all like that anyway uh, that's the top 10 of our leaderboard and there's the jag waiting to see where it goes on or does it indeed get onto that list at all let's find out let's move it up mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. hang on a minute it's faster than a gt3 rs good god i tell you that is a really properly good car that mm. it is the spitfire of cars hurricane don't leave it, it hold was the hurricane. hold leave it hold hold sure. hold steady and relax. Let's do this. We pick up the story with what typically happens after that. Get a bloody move on. <laughs> I am racing a pickup truck off road in Wales to refuel a helicopter. Go, go, go. I have the biggest engine, 3.2. I'm racing a pickup truck off road in Wales to refuel a helicopter. Go! I have the biggest engine, 3.2 litres, five cylinders, and not only is it strong enough to pull a train, literally, it's also the engine they use in the transit van. And those, as anyone who's ever been on a motorway knows, have a top speed of more than what you're in. test if you think about it it is rather pertinent that we are filming this in the UK because a couple of years when Brexit has really caught up with us there will be a civil war and you will need pickup trucks to drive the grip from the four-wheel drive system and the wider track and the Michelin cup tires absolutely Wobbles your eyes, it's phenomenal. This gap in the wall, I save having to drive all the way around the end of it. Here I come. Oh, I have a compass. This is a piece of cake. Now, we're alone, viewers, I will admit I'm not feeling entirely confident about this. The 2.3 litre engine in my Mercedes is very robust, it'll last for a thousand years. It's not what you'd call powerful. There might be a few aerodynamic issues as well. But anyway, I'm going to go in D on the basis that Mercedes knows better than me. Oh, I have a compass. This is a piece of cake. Get away. Now we're alone, viewers. I will admit I'm not feeling entirely confident about this. 2.3 litre engine in my Mercedes is very robust. It'll last for a thousand years. That's not what you'd call powerful. There might be a few aerodynamic issues as well. But anyway, 
I'm gonna go in D on the basis that Mercedes knows better than me. for freedom fighters in Africa and the Middle East. I think it's aimed more at surveyors in England. I mean, it's got a laptop charging point here and a leather steering wheel. I'm sure you need that kind of thing in Mogadishu. Need to go west, west, south, west for a bit, but avoiding that clump of trees. No way, you're not coming through. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Yeah, he's crossed up. Come on, Jerry, get him, get him, get him. No, no. I'm now in the lead. I'm doing winning. Let go. Is that barrel gonna... It is inevitable in the developing world that one day all pickup trucks end... Let's do this. <laughs> Dogs of war. Not scared. The Spaniel of war is what it is. <laughs> Brilliant. I have to oh, easy. 
Rambo May had missed all the barn doors, all of the bus, and all of the soldiers. So, with a score of zero to beat, Arnold Hammondenegger was feeling very confident. Stand up. I am standing up. <laughs> oh, he loves that. <laughs> Welcome to Richard Hammond's usual weekend. Again. I had a bit of gun trouble, I'll not lie. Well, here's some more news. Yes? General Stonewall Clarkson has gone off to get ready, but I suddenly remembered... Remember when we were in Jordan? Yeah. He can't fire automatic rifles. No. Do you remember? Because... because he's... It's, it's, it's crossed over, isn't he? He's, yeah. He's right-handed, yeah. but left-eyed. Yeah, so, so he, he shoots... shoots from his left side. Exactly, he's diagonal. Which means all the spent cartridges burn his arm. Exactly. Well, he'll be using a pistol, won't he? He always uses yes. a pistol. Actually, I wasn't using a pistol. <laughs> That's what I've got. A 50 cal. Lock and load. Yes. <laughs> Looking good. Right, splendid. I was very brave. I was very brave. How would you work that out? And I hate to tell you this, but you haven't hit the doors, which were the target. How do you know I haven't hit the doors? Because like, there's no... Well, on that terrible disappointment for him, time to go back to the tent. <laughs> no. Here we go! <laughs> Nought. <laughs> Right. You really got nothing. Yep, that's it. OK, so after all of that, what is our conclusion, gentlemen? Can we do a sensible one? Yeah. See, the thing is, that mercedes Nissan you had, it did have a wobbly back end, and I just don't think that's good enough, actually, in a pickup truck. I really don't. The Volkswagen is very good, but 
pickup trucks are working tools, and it's just a bit too posh. You wouldn't want to get into it in muddy boots, so I don't think that will work. So really. it's the Ford, then? It's the cheapest? It is the cheapest, and it's, I think, the best looking, and it is actually the one I'd have. You'd have the Ford? Yeah. So we both have the Ford. Have the Ford. Yeah. yeah, we'd have the Ford. James, what would you have? I wouldn't have a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but in, in this test of pickup trucks, which one would you have? Which are you going for? None of them. I wouldn't have one. No, I know, but no, we're testing pickups, so which, which pickup truck of the three would you have? I wouldn't have a pickup truck. <laughs> We've just spent, I don't know, 20 minutes reviewing these pickup trucks. The ladies and gentlemen would like to know which is the best. Yes, I've come to a conclusion on behalf of the ladies and gentlemen, which is don't have a pickup truck. <laughs> James, it. you have a powerful imagination. Mm. Use it. Let's pretend. OK, come with me on a journey. We'll warm your imagination up. <laughs> Imagine you're an eagle. OK. Visualise that you're flying over mountains. Mm -hmm. Can you feel it? Can you feel the wind in your feathers? Mm. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. OK, now, imagine you've got a pickup truck. Which one is it? Why would an eagle have a pickup no! truck? <laughs> no! No, I mean, imagine... OK, let's... let's OK, imagine, James May, a pastoral scene. You got it? There's, like, rolling grassy hills, a few yeah. sheep around. You're a farmer. You're walking around with your dog at your heel there. Sheep all around you. Can I have Beethoven play? Beethoven is yeah, playing, okay. obviously, live. There's a, an old <laughs> five-barred gate there. An old oak tree arches over the gate. And under the oak tree is your farmer's pickup truck. Which one is it? It's not there. <laughs> I wouldn't have a... Because I wouldn't have a pickup truck. So Neither should anybody else. You even have a pickup in your imagination... My you imagination does not admit a pickup truck. I'm not being stubborn. I know my mind. Yes. And I don't want I a pickup truck. And what I know is that you've wasted so much time not choosing a pickup truck and claiming that the Battle of Britain was a draw that we don't have time for the big celebrity duel between Adrian Charles and Howard from the Halifax ads. Oh, no. Exactly. And on that terrible disappointment, we must end. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.